two, three. Looks like we're started. Okay, welcome. Uh, what we're going to do here is have a little, I'm not going to call it a tutorial. I'm going to call it more of an inspirational video. Because I'm not really going to, I'm still learning this, so I'm not teaching you anything. What I want to do is inspire others to start looking at Fusion for more than just the mechanical end of things. Um, it's great at it. We've all seen uh, Joel and Angus doing their fidget spinners. Angus has done a few other things. Joel's done a few other things. I've even done a few other things. Um, and so tons of other people. But the one thing that seems to get overlooked a lot is the sculpting end. So I'd like to get into the sculpting end. Now, I've played with this, and I'm still learning it. But if you go on Thingiverse, or you've seen it on the Facebook page for 3D printing, um, I did the... Simply distorted vases. I did these all in the Fusion 360's sculpting area. And what I like to do is inspire other people to do kind of the same thing. Uh, the first thing you always do in Fusion, if you're beginning to learn and you've listened to any of the higher end people, sculpt, is always start with a new component. Um, I still haven't 100% figured this out yet. Why? But everyone says you should do it. So, I'm doing it. Um, get your new component, and then click right here on this little purple square thing. I love that little purple square thing. Now, you can start drawing in it, just like you would in the normal parametric, I believe, is the word I'm looking for. Um, drawing. Let's do, let, let's do something a little different. Let's go into a polygon. Actually, let's do an ellipse. That's even better. I haven't played with ellipse much. So we're going to draw an ellipse on the bottom face. And drag it out some. I'm actually going to distort it even more. I think I'm going to put a box in with it. Just have the corner stick out a little bit. think and again this is all just we're just having fun here um, where's the sketch we have to can I just trim yes I believe I can Paint in our dimensions are removed yeah I don't care now let's extrude it Great. Extrude. And we'll extrude it out. And get this bizarre shape. Now, extruding this way is a little different in that it's hollow. There's no top. There's no bottom. It doesn't extrude the face. It just extrudes the edges, the lines. And you've got this whole thing over here, and you can do all kinds of different settings. Um, I like to at least double my side so let's go to 16 oops 16 and let's give it say six front faces that'll give me some play and that's what you end up with pretty cool so now we need to play with it i like it but we need to play with it so what I start doing, and again, this is all experimenting. You can do faces. You can do, you know, you can select a face. You can select points. You can you can distort the crap out of this thing. I've been playing mostly lately with lines. And if you click on one and then double click on it, click on it, select it, and then double click on it real fast, it'll it'll select the loop, as you can see here. It'll also select the line. Like if I double click here. It'll select that whole line, anything connected. And it gets a little tricky and it takes a little getting used to to figure out. But anyways, here it is, and I'm going to hit the modify. And I highly recommend that you go down all of these and play. And again, just, just play with this program. It, it's, it's unbelievable how much stuff it can do. Um... Let's just shrink this down a little. 
Now, if you notice, it's a little weird, a little sharp, because it's actually stopping any distortion in here. It doesn't actually stop it, but it, it's not reacting. There is this little soft modification feature, which will allow it to, anything you do, I'm not even sure how to describe it. It, 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 it softens the selections, your movements, your modifications. And as you can see, it gives me a much nicer arc. You can change this graduate and how it works to some extent. You can change its radius. That means how much it selects. If I increase this to say 40, it should see it selects more of it. So when I modify it, those proportionally go up and, and take some of the modification with it. Let's go back to like 25. I like that. Shouldn't hit return. Okay. So let's shape this down and make it a little, I don't know, different. Let's use the soft. What do you think? Let's make it even smaller. I think that's a good place to start. Okay. Now, the next cool thing I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to select this. But I'm going to go up, holding my shift, and select each row. And there's a reason why I'm just selecting the rows here. And you'll see for a minute, in a minute, what I'm doing. Again, I'm going to modify. And this is part of my whole fun with what I call the simply distorted vases. I'm making a vase, and I simply distort it. Now what I'm going to do is twist it a little. Let's go 15 degrees. See how cool that was? Now by selecting them all, all the ones above it maintain. Now the cool thing I'm going to do here is this bottom row, I want to twist it up more and kind of corkscrew it. Now if I take this bottom row, put your shift key down, and then double click that line again, it'll deselect that line but keep these selected. Pretty cool. Now, I can do another 15 degrees, or, yeah, let's go 15 degrees again, make it a nice even one. Do it again. Select that one. Again, holding the shift key before you select it, and then double click, and it'll deselect that whole layer. And again, just go up it another 15 or 20 degrees let's go make sure that start bringing it back what do you think Should I start bringing it back nah that looks too weird I think I will go to 20 degrees give it a little more arc Like that. And what I think I'm actually going to do is stretch it a little. I'm going to bring it in a little. And then, and then I think I will start coming back with my angle. What do you think? I think let's go back with the angle. Yeah. Do the 15 again. Let's. Get where I can actually get at that line. Double click on that line again, it deselects it. Let's stretch this up a little, a lot. How's that sound? Let's expand it out. Look at that facey look. And then let's twist it back some more that way. Check it out, huh? Isn't that pretty cool? You get all kinds of distortion. And you know what, even let's shrink it this way, but expand it this way. And again, this is all I'm just having fun playing. It's not just about bases, I just happen to be stuck in this bases groove, I guess you could say. That's pretty cool looking. I like it. Okay, now there's no bottom, 
So what we do is we double click on that loop on the bottom again. This is a little weird. I've had issues with it. We're going to fill the hole. Now, first things first, see how it's yellow? If you do the maintain creases, it'll keep the sharp edge. It'll crease the lines. Get it? Maintain creases. Now, um, depending on your shape, how detailed it is, these three different um, versions, hole filling systems, patterns, whatever you want to call it, I guess patterns is the right word, um, will give you different results. And they'll, some of them will look great, and then when you go to export it, it won't look so great. <laughs> Um, you'll get errors and it'll tell you it's overlapping or something. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. But anyway, let's uh, go with that one because it looks good. And it's a nice even pattern and shouldn't give me any problems. Now, we're not quite done yet. What do we want to do now? What do you think? I think I want to get rid of some of this creasing. See these dark lines? These are creasings. When you're working in this kind of um, sculpting, they give you sharp edges. Let's get rid of some of the sharp edges. Let's get rid of them. Um, actually, let's get rid of this one. So we go over here and we uncrease. And that will give you all kinds of weird displays, but if you look, See so, you how this is very sharp and this isn't? Let's also uncrease that one. We'll uncrease this one. And make the two sides match. And you know what? I think I'm going to go down a few and uncrease that. Make the whole top half smoother. And that's all it does is make the transition between each face smooth instead of a sharp, creased edge. Do it here, too. Why not? <sighs> now, just so you know, you don't have to be worried about your computer too much. I am using a 2010 Mac Mini to do this. And not only am I using Fusion, but I'm also recording the screen capture and my voice and all of that all on this little Mac Mini while running Fusion 360 all at the same time. And there's nothing fantastic about this Mac Mini. I do have the RAM maxed and I do have a rather large hard drive, but the, the RAM max is only 8 gig. <laughs> That's it. That's the most it'll do. Um, so you really don't have to worry about the power of your computer within reason as long as it's a fairly, you know, a, a, a 2005 or newer computer. It will run Fusion, and you can do some of this. Now, you probably noticed a few of these places. I'm getting a little boggy, but it's not terrible. I think I want to get rid of these, too. I think I want to increase these all the way down, just on one side, though. The other side I'll leave creased. I think that'll look cool. It'll give it kind of a propeller looking shape. What do you think, guys? I think that's cool. Oh, and let's do the opposite here. How's that? Again, this is all about experimentation. Let's see, I did it on the left here, so let's do it on the left here. You could do it on the right there if you wanted. You could do whatever you want. That looks pretty cool. Okay. And as you can see, it kind of rounded off edges some places, and where I didn't, it didn't. I didn't select it, it didn't. Whoops. <clears throat> I think I like it. It's a little different. It's a little odd. It's not my best one. You know what? I think I want to shrink that down just a hair.
I really like that. Kind of happy with it. So, now that I'm done, there's our sculpting. Finish your form. Now again, if you did something weird on the bottom here, you'll sometimes get errors because of this. I, I don't know why. But it gives you sometimes errors. And let's look at it. And that's it. There's your little vase mode. Now again, this has no thickness. These lines, zero thickness. So when you export this, you pretty much can only print it in spiral mode. Now, it's not the only thing you can do in sculpting. Again, it's, you know, it's just one of the things I like doing. I like doing these little vases. So anyways, let's export it. Here's the item. We export it out as desktop. Base inspired. And then we print it. And again, this thing's going to be a little laggy because I'm doing eight different things on it all at once. But that's it. Let's print it. 